Okay, let's talk about the Pennsylvania grades four through eight. Uh, subject concentration mathematics assessment. And here is the code. It's 5158. And this is a PECT uh, uh, exam. So that's a big title. And the only reason a person would be watching uh, a video like this <laughs> is that you're taking this exam. So that's my assumption uh, that you're you're going to um, you know become a math teacher in the state of Pennsylvania uh, through uh, grades four through eight, maybe likely uh, middle school. So uh, welcome. And let me go ahead and introduce myself. We're going to be taking a look at a practice problem here. But my name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. And I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. Um, so I know what it's like to take certification exams. I have a degree in math, master's degree. And I know what it's like to teach in a classroom. So uh, teaching is one of those professions that oftentimes doesn't get uh, the respect that it deserves in, in uh, the terms of how much work you have to do just to even start <laughs> teaching, right? <laughs> you got to get a degree, you got to become a student teacher, you got to get certifications, and then finally you get yourself, uh, you know, into your first teaching experience, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want to turn this into a... Uh, you know, go off on a tangent about teaching, but I am passionate about it. So, you know, I'm always trying to, you know, uh, help my fellow teachers out. So let's go ahead and talk about this particular assessment. And uh, the math on here, because, you know, a lot of times, if you haven't taken a look at the kind of math that's on this assessment, um, oftentimes people can get, um, uh, let's say, underestimate the amount of math you need to know. So this is grades four through eight, and you're like, oh, I'm only going to be dealing with place value, percentage, fractions, real basic algebra. That's not the case, okay? Uh, for this assessment, you need to know a, you know, a pretty good amount of advanced high school level math, um, algebra, geometry, and other things to do well, okay? So you haven't seen the kind of math that's on here. You really should take a look uh, take a look at it. So um, hopefully you already know that. And if you're, you know, doing your due diligence studying, that's excellent. Uh, I do want to say that I offer an excellent math prep course uh, to this particular assessment. I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video, but we'll talk about that, that uh, later. What I want to do, though, here is challenge you with this practice problem. Okay, so of course I'm going to solve it, but I want to give you a chance to solve it. So it's I to the 27th power, I to the 27th power. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. We're talking about imaginary numbers, right? So we have the real number system, and then we have the complex number system. Okay, so the complex number system is made up of numbers that look like this, A plus B, I. I don't want to get into this too much. There's an imaginary component to it. So if you're with me so far, understand what's going on, then that's excellent. So don't use your calculator. Don't do anything. Just kind of see if you can uh, solve this. So I to the 27th power. So um, I would encourage you to pause the video. You know, even if you don't, even if you're not going to solve it, at least pause the video and think about it for a minute or two or 30 seconds just to kind of see, you know, hey, what would you do with this particular problem? Of course, I'll solve it here in a moment. Okay, so hopefully you uh, pause the video and kind of uh, messed around with this. So I to the 27th power. This is an interesting uh, problem, but it's a, a you know kind of problem that you would see definitely at the high school level when you're studying uh, imaginary numbers. Again, uh, you need to be uh, familiar with the number uh, systems. Okay, we have the real number system. All right, I don't want to get into that, but you should know what that is. Then we have complex numbers. Now, why do we have complex numbers? Well, complex numbers exist to handle a situation like this. So if I take the square root of 16, my answer is going to be positive negative 4. But if I try to take the square root of negative 16, okay, and you put that into your calculator, and let's say you have one of those uh, top-end, you know, graphene scientific calculators, you're not going to get the answer. This is actually 4i, okay, because it's negative 16. What times uh, itself is going to get you back to negative 16, right? It can't be negative 4 because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So this situation requires us to understand imaginary numbers, and that's part of the complex number system. 
So things that you should be familiar with, okay? All right, so if you're lost at this point, well, then I would still encourage you to watch the rest of the video. But if you're following uh, me, then that's excellent. All of you out there um, have studied this by the nature of where you're at. If you're taking this assessment, you've already taken the math. Uh, you just may not remember it, okay? But again, that's what this video is here to do to help you, uh, help you out. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and solve it. So first, we want to just understand what is I equal to, all right? So pop quiz, the value of I, okay, is the square root of negative 1. So hopefully, you guys remember that. Like, oh, okay, yeah, this is kind of coming back. So um, let's go to get a few more values of I. So I squared, okay, let me write that a little bit better. I squared would be uh, I Okay, this i squared. So let's, this would be the same thing as squaring both sides. Here, we'll do it this way. All right, I'll square both sides here. So i squared is going to just be equal to negative 1. Okay, so hopefully you see why that's the case. Okay, and then i cubed is the same thing as i squared times i. Okay, that's the same thing right here, right? That's i to the first power, so that's i cubed. So I already know the value of i squared. i squared is negative 1, and I know the value of i, okay, or i to the first, or i. It's the square root of negative 1. So here, you could just write this as negative 1 times i, but we won't write that as the square root of negative 1. We'll just leave it as i. So i cubed is the same thing as negative i, okay? All right, so I'm doing that to um, basically show you how we're going to strategize to to figure this thing out. Okay, now you don't want to go and say i to the 27th power. Let's see here. That'll be negative one times negative one times negative one, and you went off and did that 27 times. Now that is one way to to do this problem. Okay, and you could probably figure it out because it's to the 27th power. Although it would be Kind of brutal math, but if I made this to the 270th power, you know, I could have just increased this and you know, <laughs> made this problem uh, not uh, you know achievable by just doing it longhand. We need to come up with another approach. Okay, so the best approach is this: we're dealing with power. So this this question is kind of um, really testing your knowledge of powers and exponents and imaginary numbers. So I can write i to the 27th as this i times i to the 26th power. Okay, so i, right? i is the same thing as i to the first. Remember, same base, I can just add the exponents here, so that's the same thing as i to the 27th. Okay, so hopefully you can see that, all right? So i times i to the 26th, so it's, and the reason why I did that is now I can use another property of exponents. I'm gonna write this this way to deal with this i to the 26. So check this out. I can go i times i squared to the 13th power, okay? i squared to the 13th power is the same thing as i to the 26. So now I'm kind of rewriting this problem so it's much easier to, uh, to handle, okay? So now I have i squared, or i to the 27th is the same thing as i times i squared to the 13th power. Okay, so now I just have this as i. I know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So that's going to be negative 1 to the 13th power. So now I can kind of distill my problem down to figure, uh, uh, looking at what is i uh, negative 1 to the 13th power. And this is where pattern recognition comes in to play. So let's, let's just take a look at some uh, things here. All right, so I'm just multiplying negative 1 by itself. So negative 1 times negative 1, that's going to be a positive 1. And then here, know that this is even number of 1s. And here I have an odd number of 1s. I'm going to get negative 1. Okay, so here we'll do it again. Multiply i, uh, negative uh, 1, excuse me, times itself four times. I'm going to get a positive 1. And if I make it odd, in other words, like five times, okay, it becomes negative again, all right? So negative 1, positive 1. You can kind of see the pattern here, right? So I'm taking negative 1 to an odd power. 
So I'm going to get negative one. I don't need to do that. I just kind of need to, you know, know this, but you can kind of do this by pattern recognition. So in other words, if I was uh, trying to figure out what negative one to the 131st power is, it's, I'm taking it to an odd power. So all of this is going to be negative one. So that gives me i to the 27th is equal to i times negative 1. I'm going to write that a little bit better. i times negative 1. Okay, so hopefully you understand how we, you know, we, uh, we're getting from here to here. And now I could just go ahead and just take negative 1 times i. And so we can just say i to the 27th is the same thing as negative i. And we are done. Okay, so... That's how you, uh, you solve this particular problem. Uh, again, this is really an exercise in your ability to work with powers and exponents, your understanding of complex numbers, your understanding of looking at patterns, etc. But this is a problem or uh, definitely topics that will, you know, um, will be on this particular assessment. This is high school level math, maybe the kind of stuff you learn at the algebra two level. All right. But again, just because you're teaching middle school or fourth grade, eighth grade, you're always going to be um, having to learn math beyond that. Okay, so like if you're going to be a middle school teacher, you're going to be tested for sure at advanced high school level mathematics, even a little bit of maybe some calculus, you know, topics a little bit. But at the high school level math, think about it. In high school, you know, you'll be you might be teaching, you know, uh, definitely you might be teaching calculus. So you got to be uh, able to be able to teach calculus. So even at the middle school level, um, you might be teaching Algebra 1, Honors Geometry, et cetera. It all depends. I don't know how the specifics of uh, the curriculum in Pennsylvania. But in other words, you're going to be teaching um, uh, things that are kind of normally taught at high school. You certainly could be. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. All right, so um, again, uh, you know, all my videos are really help to, you know, design to help you, you know, get through these exams. So I've been uh, on YouTube for, I think now, like maybe 12 years, have literally hundreds and hundreds of videos, really enjoy uh, posting content. So hopefully you consider subscribing if you like my teaching style. I'm always putting stuff out there, and there's a ton of stuff on my channel already that can help you out. Hey, if you enjoyed this particular video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback, uh, you know. What's drawing you to teach math? Are you coming from the elementary level or switching? Or, you know, what's your background? Are you going to thinking about maybe one day teaching, you know, middle school or high school? Uh, just any feedback is good feedback. Always enjoy uh, reading the comments of fellow teachers. And that's what you are. You are uh, my peer. Okay. So there's no, I think, you know, some teachers think, oh, I teach high school physics. So my, um, uh, it's harder than teaching second grade elementary. That's not the case. I've uh, discovered that a long time ago. All teaches at all levels work hard. Okay, it's a it's a it's a challenging career, but it's also a very rewarding career. And the only people who are going to truly understand that are your uh, fellow teachers. So hopefully this video uh, helped you out. And um, again, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my prep course, uh, my uh, to this particular exam. All my courses are extremely comprehensive, and it's taken me literally years to build. So I think you'll find it super beneficial. Um, but anyways, if you want to check that out, you can uh, click the link in the description of this video. Um, I definitely wish you all the best in your career. Uh, thank you for your time, and have a great day.